Hi, I'm Yannick. Hi, my name is Sonja. And this is our rig, Jimmy. Come have a peek inside. So this is our indoor living area. So we've got our kitchen here. We've got our fresh water system, which we filter down here in a two way with coal and everything. So everything's out. It's really fresh. We make our coffee with it. Um, we don't use the sink much. We actually do the dishes outside most of the time. It's all really small and we're outside most of the time anyways. We've got a lamp. We've got our fairy lights for more comfort and then really important to us is this little tray over here this is our coffee table <laughs> because we drink a lot of coffee it's the first thing we do in the morning so we can take everything out we've got little straps down here we can put it back in and it actually even holds up when we're off-roading which is quite surprising we didn't think it would but it does so that's good then we've got a utility drawer here which is everything we need like lots of stuff then we have down here we have our cups and pots and pans and stuff in these boxes so they are all neatly stored and they don't make a lot of noise when we're driving. Same on the other side. This is like our one of our bathroom drawers where we have like deodorant and stuff like that. And this is really handy because when we drive like dirt roads and stuff then this will open at some point but if we put this over it then it can't really open or it closes by itself which is really good then on this side we've got our second water system which is a hot water system with um, an algina which makes hot water via the coolant from the car so we don't have to use any electricity or anything it will just heat up the water while driving and then we can have a shower or do the dishes and then there's more water here because you need a lot of water and then this is quite handy we can pull actually pull this out and make like a second bed downstairs if we stealth camp or if it's really windy and we don't want to sleep at the top then we will do this but we don't use it very much just in the beginning there was a snowstorm but now not that important anymore then back here this will go up as a table we've got like a leg in the front that we can put in and then we have a table inside here is like our storage for the kitchen area more water and then there's spices over here for cooking. In the middle, there's our fridge. Small, but enough for us. It has everything we need. And then we've got our clothes back in here, socks, underwear, and stuff like that. And down here at the bottom, there's our electricity. There's our battery and all the components we need for solar and stuff like that. And next to it, there's stuff that we actually don't use a lot, like... I don't know, there's a big first aid kit because my dad's a doctor and he thinks we need it all. We need it all. And uh, yeah, some parts for the car and stuff like that. And then we've got more storage up here. And then we have a bed on the second story. So we've got a two-story apartment. That's what we like to stay, say. And we sleep upstairs. You can just pull it down. And then we've got a really comfortable bed up there. And we even got a home cinema system, <laughs> a really small one where we can lie in bed and watch movies and stuff. I've always wanted to travel actually since I was 18 years old, I think. And then I kept pushing it forward because there was always something up. First I had no money, then there was work. Then I actually met him. And then he was still studying, so he had to finish his studies and he wanted to come along. And then I was more than 30 years old and it was like, ah, I don't want to go backpacking in Thailand anymore. I'm too old for that. So we just set it on a car and that's how we came to Jimmy. <laughs> I think the lure is uh, that you have a lot of freedom. You can, if you have your home with you, you can just move and, and work from time to time do something on the road, visit nice places, but basically you're free to go wherever you want to go. You're not stuck at a city you don't like or where you might not like it in, at some certain point in the, in during the year. You can just move. You drive another thousand kilometers and then you're in the sun again, or in the snow, wherever you want to go. So 
this is the entrance area to our indoor living area, kind of the in-between between outdoor and indoor. We've got a little shoe rack on this side, which is really handy because we never know where to store our shoes, actually. Then we've got some more storage in the back, in one of the back doors, where there's just some first aid that you might need more often. We've got a, we've got like our bathroom back here. There's like our outdoor wash for not polluting the environments, our toothbrushes. And in there, we've got our, all, everything we need for showering. And then we have the shower plug back here. There we can turn on hot or cold water. And then we've got our eggs and our saw for, yeah, for fires and stuff like that. So there's uh, like a little part where we can plug in uh, devices like cell phones. And really important, we've got the control panel for the Webasto back here, which is really important. It's like a diesel heater that actually heats up the engine and not primarily the indoor of the car, which is why it it's not as good as an air heater. But when you're in a really cold country, then it will make sure that your car will start anytime <laughs> and that is maybe that can be handy at some points, but which is what is really good when we're in bed, we can still just reach out and push the button and we'll have a warm, warm car when we get up, which is really good. And then over here, we've got these mats that we can actually pull up. So these have a little bit of a function for cold and warm weather because it keeps out the heat or the cold. It works, not perfect, but it works. <laughs> but we got really lucky and the owner of that car, which was the first owner, actually wrote us if we want to buy his car because he couldn't anymore because he was too old and couldn't get up in the top to get And he the wanted bed. the car to keep on traveling. Didn't want to sell it to a vendor who puts like 80% markup and sells it to someone else. He wanted to give it to a young couple who travels the world with it so the car can keep traveling. The car has seen way more places yeah. than we have. Because he was a lot of in Africa and in Asia yeah. and now we are doing the Americas. Yeah. So. Only Antarctica to go and we are full. So. <laughs> so this is basically our outdoor kitchen. Um, we have here, we have a window which we can pop up. This is a, these are our max tracks, They're not the kitchen part, but when we are stuck in, in sand or something, we can um, yeah, put them down, put them under to get some traction. So this pops down and it's two in one. It's a, a table as well. So Sonia can, most of the time, because I'm quite big, Sonia can sit in the inside and reach me all stuff and I can cook here with some, uh, it's white gas cookers, which we just uh, put here and then we're good to go and can cook. The problem with these are they are either on or off, so we can either have cold food or burnt food. It's a bit iffy, but yeah, it works. Uh, another good thing is we have a 270 degrees awning, and that gives us shade and uh, shelter from rain uh, when it rains. So we basically can move in that, the, this area and cook without getting uh, wet or sunburned. So that's quite nice. Because the car is so small on the inside, it really extends our living space. So we can be inside, can hear, we can open this, uh, door up, close this one, and we can move in and out of the car without getting wet, which is pretty nice. Additionally, to have more space where we can put stuff, we have a wheel backpack on here, on the wheel. Um, where we put the greasy stuff in here, so basically like recovery stuff, um, oils, some stuff, uh, the, the, the dishes, like our, our extendable sink. Um, yeah. Additionally, here, that's a grill we can put over a fire, which comes Probably handy in warmer climates. Right now we don't use it that much because it's a bit freezy, but yeah, that's going to be great. Additionally, we have a ladder here, which gives us roof access. Um, so we can reach the storage on the top and check out if the solar panels are still, well, snow free, basically. So yeah. We started not working. We wanted to do it just by savings. We lived in a tiny apartment for two years. We didn't go out anymore, COVID helped with that. But because everything got so expensive, the gas prices went up so bad and the food prices, the Euro is really bad too. And we figured we are not really good in just eating 
oats. <laughs> we want our vegetables and uh, want some kind of a good living. So we started working remotely for one or two days a week. And it's actually a lot of fun because after a while, not using our head for creative stuff, we, we actually missed it. We never thought we would, but we missed it. And so now we're happily working a little bit. The near future, we basically keep driving south. We, we started in Halifax in March, went all the way across Canada, went up to the Arctic Ocean, took a dip in the Arctic Ocean, went to Alaska. Now we are in Moab. Um, next week we want to cross to Baja and then from there it's basically down south. We want to spend Christmas on the beach in yeah. Baja because our summer has been really cold and we really miss the warmth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so and we lagged a bit. We drove yeah. nearly 40,000 kilometers in the last seven months and maybe just slow it down a little bit in Baja would be great. But afterwards, basically downwards to Panama, from Panama to Colombia shipping and then down to Ushuaia in Argentina. So the classic Pan-American route. We have more recovery gear here, more like to pressure down the tires or pressure them up. I have like a warning vest if we break down, but well, it's a Toyota, so it's probably not going to break down. But yeah, you never know. Uh, here, that's for the cookers. We can cook basically with white gas, which I just showed you before. That's the white gas storage and that's it, uh, cooking alcohol, which you can use indoors. Indoor we have butane as well, so we have like multi-fuel, whatever where, where we are, what we can buy, so we are not that dependent on one source of energy to heat up our food. And um, here, that's a shower curtain or a privacy cube, it's basically one by one cube which comes down, folds down and we can from the inside, we can use it as a shower. Alright, here that's a sub tank where we can put another 110 liters um, to the main tank which is 90 liters, so we have 200 liters of diesel which gets us 1200 kilometers. As a recurring uh, topic, storage is a big problem in our small car, so we have a lot of outside but on the top as well, so we, we have a big crate there as well. As you can see on top of it there's more solar, we have 200 watts solar which feeds into a 150 amperes lithium battery. Every proper off-roader needs, there's a snorkel, which we need to, when we go to one meter 50 deep water. The only problem with that is with when we go through that deep water, the engine can still breathe, but our car will be flooded badly. So we don't do that. We have a high lift jack or how they call, they call it a widow maker as well. So we hope we won't need that, but we have it in just in case. One more thing is, um, Land Cruisers are very off-road capable. But as this is our home and we are quite heavy with 3.4 metric tons, we tend to not do the really crazy stuff. More like a little bit off-road, a little bit nice uh, spots where we can stand and park and, and have, a great, uh, yeah, have a great grill, have a great barbecue, but not the off-road mud adventures some other people might do in that car. So this is the Toyota Land Cruiser J78. It has a 4.2 liter diesel uh, engine. Um, has four wheel drive, has diff locks in the front and in the back, so it's very, very off road capable. So we are on the front. Um, we have more storage for our camera gear and stuff we want to reach easily in the, in the top here. So it's cameras, maybe GoPros, maybe some audio stuff. Um, it's binoculars. I actually built in more uh, better speakers because the original one were not that great, to be honest. So I built that in because we drive a lot, obviously, when you're on the road. So you really want to hear something and not just road noise. But that's pretty nice. One of the things we appreciate the most, I think, and people sometimes forget it, we built in new seats. We paid kind of top dollar for them, but they were worth every penny of it because we had never had back pain in the last 40,000 kilometers. So that's really, really great and really, really good investment from our, from our point of view. Yeah, to make it about all a bit more nice and livable, we actually uh, put a uh, cloth on here. So this one was actually broken because the pre-owner were like screwing and everywhere, putting building construction foam everywhere. It looks pretty bad. So Sonia put in a new cloth on it. It looks really nice, to be honest. As this car has no storage, there's more storage here. We can put stuff in here, put stuff in here. And we have a center console, which you can pull out, actually, here, for easy accessible, accessible snacks. And more storage in the top for like small stuff, batteries, which we never use. One of the things we bought specially made for this car, which is not that often uh, if in, the, in Europe, uh, are these uh, bookshelves kind of thing, you know, where you can put, book, can put books. Here on this side, we actually have a fire extinguisher in there and some self-defense things. If someone wants to steal the car, which we won't let it happen.
definitely plan more time if you want to remodel your own car, plan more time than you ever thought you would. You really have to go into it. It has to be your main hobby and your main thing, center of attention, but do it. Do it now, do it while you're young. You can do, you can do so much more when you're young and what's the loss? Nothing bad most likely will happen and you will just have the time of your life. <laughs> like we never regretted it once. We had bad days, we had, we got snowed in, we had the worst weather in the beginning. March was terrible in, in Canada and we sat in the car and was like, why are we doing this? But we never really regretted going because we can always stay at home and work, but you won't remember all the time you worked. You will remember all the crazy adventures you had. Maybe on a, on a bit darker note, Go to the nice places as long as they are there. <laughs> With climate change around the corner, stuff is lost <laughs> and will never come back, at least not in our lifetime. Uh, so maybe visit us as long as you have the chance. Thank you for having a look into our Jimmy. We were very happy to show you around. And if you want to follow our journey, go over to Instagram and follow us on Road Trip in Jimmy. That's where we'll post stories and photos. Uh, not professionally, but you'll get a broader look and then, um, yeah, hope to meet you on the road.